breaking news. A birthday party ends in a shooting with the man they were celebrating killed and another man now in custody. This shooting bringing police to southwest Atlanta in apartment complex this afternoon. That's where we find Shanu Her live near Country Oaks Apartments on Fairburn Road. So Shanu, you've just learned more about how this shooting even happened. Yeah, I spoke to a neighbor who says she was here and they were celebrating the victim's birthday when an argument broke up between the victim and the suspect. Apparently, this all started over loud music. Now, for the record, I don't like when my neighbors play loud music. That's annoying. I'm not even going, I'm not going to lie to you. That's one of the rudest things you can do, especially since I've had a, I got a baby. Before I hated it. I hated it even more now that I have a baby. People live in apartments. You gotta be, you gotta be respectful. Cause the person next door to you that has to hear your loud music all night and you talking all night, and they want to kill you. They might not say it to you when you pass them in the hallway or something. They may complain to the property manager. They may even bang on the wall. They. Nine, 99 times out of 100 They're not going to come knock on your door Tell you to turn the music down They may bang on the wall Or tell the property manager The rental office or whatever But they want to kill you Yeah The person who's next door to you And they got to hear that stuff all the night Especially if it's a party house A house with a lot of people frequent They got to hear Growing all, all day long People they don't know People they can't even see just talking through their wall all day and playing loud music, they want to kill you. So that's that that's just that. I'll just put that out there. Hit one if you um agree with me on that. Not saying it's right, not saying I agree with this. I just the sentiment. Birthday when an argument broke up between the victim and the suspect. Apparently, this all started over loud music. And he's laid out in the breezeway right now, dead. Angel McWhorter is distraught. I always something. So many people have died. I heard it is on top of a graveyard. She says she grew up with the man who was killed during his own birthday party at the Country Oaks Apartments in Southwest Atlanta. The old man was like, Can you please cut your music down? And in the midst of him saying, can you please cut your music down? He went in the house and got a shotgun and shot him three times in front of his kids. Wow. Now, we know that that's not all that happened. We know that the man didn't just go get a shot. There were probably threats made. Something, there's more to this. Although I don't condone this. But knowing that the man was older, who was complaining about this. Old people are, are often victimized. And I know if this guy knew he was living next to an older guy, he probably had zero respect for his um his comfort or what or, or his living situation. And people get fed up with that. Now let's I would like to know and see if hopefully they give us more details so we can learn what led up to this. Did he just say turn the music down and then run and get a gun, or was it more in between that? The old man was like, can you please cut your music down? And in the midst of him saying, can you please cut your music down? He went in the house and got a shotgun and shot him three times in front of his kids. Atlanta police says the suspect they have in custody is between 55 to 65 years old. And the victim, who hasn't been named yet, is between 25 to 30. Lieutenant Daniel Jensen says when the officers got to the scene, the victim had already died. Who would want to live here? Hit one if you would want to live here. That just looked like a a spot. She already said so many people died, but and we already know it's in Southwest Atlanta. So those two <laughs> pieces of information. Who would want to live here, man? The victim had already died. At that point, the officers were directed to a, a possible shooter. He was taken into custody without incident. Angel says what's even more heartbreaking, the victim and suspect know each other and seemed to get along well. The man that killed him, usually they were friends. They get along every day. They drink beer every day. They all hang out. So today was just a day. I guess he just got, you know, irritated or tired. But, I mean, I grew up out here. 
So they was friends. They used to drink beers and kick it. It's more to this. I don't know. I. It's more to this one as it is with every story. R.I.P. to the young brother, man. Um, old dudes, just, a lot of old dudes ain't having it. I mean, like our buddy Bernard Berry, man. They not going to let you threaten them or say you coming back or what you going to do or, or you act, take something from them. They going to just put that work in up front. They going to take the initiative. R.I.P. man. The man that killed him, usually they was friends. They get along every day. They drink beer every day. They all hang out. So today was just a day. I guess he just got, you know, irritated or tired. But I mean, I grew up out here. The APD says they are still in the very early stages of this investigation. But what they do know is that there's evidence suggesting there's more than one shooter. So right now, that's something that they're looking into. Official charges are now filed against a Cudahy man accused of killing another man on Memorial Day. Authorities say that he shot the victim eight times in Johnson's Park in Milwaukee. CBS 58's Kim Shine read through that criminal complaint and joins us live at that park. Kim. A 29-year-old Milwaukee man is the victim in this vicious murder. A witness telling police that the shooter stole from the victim after the crime. Eight. According to Milwaukee County authorities, that's how many gunshots went into David Hughes's body on May 31st. It happened at Johnson's Park near 19th and Fond du Lac. And officials say this man, 33-year-old Charles Reddick, is responsible. The park was occupied by multiple citizen family groups. And yes, everybody it appears fled um, once the shots were fired. In the complaint, a witness told police she was hanging out with the victim at the park when she noticed someone running towards them. She says she saw Reddick come up behind the victim and shoot him in the back of the head. She begged him to stop. She says Reddick then removed a mask from his face and shot the victim four or five more times. She believes he wanted the victim to see his face. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with her. And the fact that he didn't shoot her too. Because it probably was so many witnesses out there. It didn't matter. Apparently, from, from what they said earlier, it was a crowded park. To run up on a crowded park, shoot a man in the back of the head, then stand over him and shoot him eight more times. Take the mask off. Yeah, I did that. Now what? I mean, look, man. There's no hope. Like, I, I told you guys a, a while ago, I think I told might have told you guys a while ago, that I believe this is a hopeless situation. I believe this situation on the ground in Blackerstead, in the Sun Belt, <laughs> is completely hopeless. This brother who's being charged with this crime, I don't know what the other brother did to him to make him want to do this. Because I told you, I'd be wanting to do this. Because the respect level from one brother to the next is so low right now. Like, if you think, if if you think um, hate crimes against Asians is bad, or white people getting it bad, or black women, brothers are very hostile towards each other. Because it one because so much of this is going on is the the trust. It's a low trust society. The brotherhood is a is the lowest trust possible society that you could have. Everybody's wary of everybody. Everybody's disrespectful. Everybody's doing little stuff to try to push people buttons. 
who knows what was done to this brother to make him just go out like this. Because this brother just a crowded park. I was at the park two weeks ago with my wife and my daughter. And I'm just picturing the scene. Family here, family there, family there. People just building around, kids playing. People throwing frisbee with their dogs. Tables right here, tables of food right here, tables of balloons. And somebody run up in that with a mask on, shoot a guy in the back of his head, take the mask off, stand over top of him, finish him off. Wow. Begged him to stop. She says Reddick then removed a mask from his face and shot the victim four or five more times. She believes he wanted the victim to see his face. After the shooting, she says Reddick went through the victim's pockets and stole his fanny pack before running out of the park. Reddick is charged with one count of first degree reckless homicide and possession of a firearm by a felon. And Reddick returns to court for a preliminary hearing on Monday, June 21st. Here in Milwaukee, Kim Shine, CBS 58 News. Governor, what do you say to Representative Sanfilippo's call for you to activate the National Guard to address violence in Milwaukee? And now to our big story at five. Calls to bring in the National Guard to stop the violence in Milwaukee and the governor's response. 12 News' Kent Wainscott is live at City Hall. And Kent, there are some harsh words being used. Yeah, Joyce, Joe Sanfilippo is a Republican state rep from Waukesha County. He describes the violence in Milwaukee as a war zone-like setting. He wants the governor to call in the National Guard. The problem people have when they want to bring in the National Guard is that what you call a war zone, some people view that as normal. Like, I've lived in places that were war zones, classified as war zones. And if you live there, I mean, it doesn't necessarily feel like a war zone if you live on certain blocks. Like, if you live in that neighborhood, but you don't live on the blocks where the actual beefing and the back and forth is actually happening. Now, if you live on one of those blocks or streets where they're actually doing the shooting, it, it feels like a war zone. If you live five or six blocks over, but you're still in the same neighborhood, you hear the bullets and gunshots, but you may not see the car speeding away. You may not get hit with any strays. Your house may not get hit with any strays. Your car may not get hit with any strays. The guys who um, are the targets who no doubt shot it up somebody else's neighborhood and now this is a retaliation those guys don't hang out really on your block they hang out on another block and it becomes normalized over the years so year after year after year after year of this you just grow up with this and you know 20 30 people in your neighborhood Mostly teens, mostly young men, teenage boys and young men, and a, a few kids and senior citizens and, you know, working class people may get killed every year. But the majority of them, 80% or 75% of the people that are murdered in your neighborhood are young thug hooligans who would hog spit in your face just as fast as they would say, Hi, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's really like when someone looks at the data and they say, this is a war zone and you from there and you grew up in that. It's just normal, you know what I'm saying? It becomes normalized. But even now with this surge in violence, even now, it's like, damn, something is in the water. Yeah, Joyce, Joe Sanfilippo is a Republican state rep from Waukesha County. He describes the violence in Milwaukee as a war zone-like setting. He wants the governor to call in the National Guard. And we asked the governor and Milwaukee's mayor about that today. A 
violent weekend in Milwaukee. Police say 15 shootings and three homicides is why New Berlin Republican Rep. Joe Sanfilippo says he's calling on Governor Evers to activate the Wisconsin National Guard to help restore safety in Milwaukee neighborhoods. We asked the governor about that today. Governor, what do you say to Representative Sanfilippo's call for you to activate the National Guard to address violence in Milwaukee? Well, first of all, the re representative has to understand that the, the National Guard has been on call working all across the state you know, from the, pan the beginning of the pandemic to this very moment. San Filippo told me that he did not have time to speak with us on camera today, but his statement went on to say that Milwaukeeans, quote, deserve better than to live and work in a war zone like setting. Instead of calling in the National Guard, both Evers and Mayor Tom Barrett urged San Filippo and fellow Republicans to better fund violence reduction measures in the budget. Programs, programs, programs. The only problem with those programs is that they don't work. Not even a little bit. They're talking about violence interrupters, midnight basketball rec programs, um, program after school. None of that stuff works. The kids who are doing the shooting are not going to listen to some old 50-year-old half a wino, half a dope head who used to be a thug back in the 80s and the 90s tell them they shouldn't go retaliate against the guys who killed one of their brothers last week. <laughs> because they got to think about their future. <laughs> when they don't plan on living that long anyway. Okay? Programs don't work. The only thing that works is police, vice squads, gang task force, gang units. It's the only thing that works. Gentrification. Change the demographics of the area. Those are the only things that work to bring crime down. That's it. Nothing else works. Barrett urged San Filippo and fellow Republicans to better fund violence reduction measures in the budget. Dismiss the need for the guard here. I, I don't see. I, again, we, we have people out. We've got police officers out. But, but I am concerned about the long-term viability of the city to provide for the police department um, and that's where he is in a key position to help us and I just reject I reject the, the idea that somehow uh, we can we can replace mental health services and violence protection services and all the other things that deal with the cause of that we just ignore that and bring in the National Guard it doesn't make sense to me I'm sorry Okay, so it all goes to the bottom line, Kent. Did the governor or mayor say specifically which funding increases they want Republicans to consider? Well, today the governor pointed specifically to what he said is a small amount in his budget, about $2 million for initiatives that he says target the causes of violence. Well, Peep the language. Funding for measures that target the causes of violence. The causes of violence... Our son men <laughs> between the ages of 15 and 35. <laughs> That's the cause of the violence. So like I said, violence interrupters, midnight basketball, social programs, Free housing was house given. What the hell is that going to do? Giving these guys free housing. The only thing you can do, unfortunately, and I hate that it's like that. You think that I don't wish there was something else that could be done about this? I would love for there to be something else that could be done about this. Nothing works. 
except for arresting them and locking them up or moving them out, pricing them out of the neighborhood. Nothing works. As long as they're there, you're going to have this problem. And I hate that it's like that. If they're there, because when you price them out and they go somewhere else, you get the same problem arises. Have you noticed that? When you move them out to the suburbs, now the suburbs turn to crap. Have you noticed that when you lock them up, prison riots, prison war, gang wars in the prison? Have you noticed that? Rec centers, okay, now the shootings at the rec centers. Violence interrupters, now violence interrupters are ending up dead. How many stories have I done? A lot of you guys are new subs, but in, over the last year I did a bunch of stories on violence interrupters being murdered. It happens all the time. Because you're engaging with these savages. Like, that's what they call them. They call themselves savages. Well, today the governor pointed specifically to what he said is a small amount in his budget, about $2 million for initiatives that he says target the causes of violence, while the mayor simply wants the legislature to increase shared revenue. That's the overall amount that the city gets from the state legislature. Well, new at 10, call in the National Guard. That is what a state lawmaker is recommending to curb the violence in Milwaukee. This is a local freeway was shut down for a third time in as many days because of a report of shots fired. Stephanie Haynes asked the mayor and the governor about solutions. Backup stretched for miles on I-94 eastbound in Milwaukee on Tuesday afternoon. It's the third shots fired investigation on the freeway in three days. Now they've had to shut down the freeway. That's like, just think about it. This is going to happen because of accidents at some point during the day or a few times a week. Just before it to be happening every day because of shootings. Everyone out there feels this. Because even if you've moved out or you don't live in the neighborhood, or you stay in your house or your kids, you know. Don't go outside to play or you turn a blind eye or you woke and you woke and you, nothing that happens is ever going to change what you think because you're stubborn. No matter what, you on the freeway and you hear shots fired and then you sit in tra traffic for three hours. <laughs> You feel that. State Representative Joe Sanfilippo calls Milwaukee a, quote, war zone-like setting and wants the governor to bring in the National Guard. 98% of the people who live in the city of Milwaukee are peace-loving, law-abiding citizens. They want a safe neighborhood to live, work, and play. And that's the saddest part about it, that 98% of the people who live in these cities are not involved in this. And that's why I never understood the whole coon thing. You a coon. You hate yourself. Did you hear what he said? 98% of the people in the city are peace-loving, hard-working people. But when your city has a million people, 2%, Of the population, that's 20,000. Thugs and gangsters and hoochie mamas and rats and single moms and junkies and robbers and jackers and shooters. And that 2% Of that 
95% of that 2% are people of the sun. 98% of the people who live in the city of Milwaukee are peace-loving, law-abiding citizens. They want a safe neighborhood to live, work, and play. Governor Tony Evers says the National Guard is not the solution. I reject the, the idea that somehow uh, we, can, we can replace mental health services and violence protection services and all the other things that deal with the cause of that. We just ignore that and bring in the National Guard. It doesn't make sense to me. I'm sorry. The governor says parts of the budget are slated to go towards curbing crime. Milwaukee Mayor Tom Barrett says working out the budget is exactly how Representative San Filippo can help. That's my specific and direct ask, that he leads the charge to make sure that Governor Evers' increase in shared revenue to the city of Milwaukee is in that budget. Advocates say no one should feel unsafe in their home or neighborhood, and everyone in the community needs to work towards keeping the peace. We're asking everyone to step up, to say something if they know something, speak to a loved one or friend or family member or neighbor if you know they are headed in that direction. Milwaukee County Sheriff Ernell Lucas released a statement that reads in part, quote, we discourage motorists from discharging a firearm in an act of retaliation or an attempt to solve a dispute on our freeway system. Let's all work to ensure that everyone gets to their destination safely. In Milwaukee, Stephanie Haynes, TMJ4 News. Well, the short answer to that is no. Now, Wisconsin law does give the governor the power to activate the National Guard in many different instances, including for a natural disaster, for a public health emergency, for war, insurrection, or when the execution of laws is not being allowed. 2021 outpacing a deadly 2020. This year, the city suffered 76 homicides and 372 non-fatal shootings compared to 72 homicides and 213 non-fatal shootings this time last year. Republican State Representative Joe Sanfilippo says he's calling on Governor Evers to activate the Wisconsin National Guard to help restore safety in Milwaukee neighborhoods. Governor Evers visiting Milwaukee doesn't seem interested, saying the National Guard has been busy fighting the pandemic. I reject the, the idea that somehow uh, we can we can replace mental health services and violence protection services and all the other things that deal with the cause of that. We just ignore that and bring in the National Guard. It doesn't make sense to me. I'm sorry. The governor did call on the National Guard to protect Milwaukee and Kenosha in 2020 during violent protests. Now Evers calls on the legislature to approve additional money for violence prevention. Milwaukee Mayor Tom Barrett urges the state lawmaker to approve more money for Milwaukee. I am asking him for his help to help us get an increase in shared revenue so that we can maintain the current strength of the Milwaukee Police Department. That's my specific and direct ask. And I did speak on the phone very uh, several times today with that state lawmaker. He said he was working and didn't have time for an on-camera interview. Live in Milwaukee, Jason Calvi, Fox 6 News. So, as you can see, Milwaukee is 44% white and 38% black. Off to the gun memorial. All right, fatal shootings in Milwaukee. God. Brittany Meyer, mother of two killed. Look how many of these people have masks on in their gun memorial picture nowadays. Wow. Does this look like a city where where all the white people? Because you know one thing about Milwaukee white people. Many of them are poor. Okay? 
This is not like the East Coast or the West Coast. This ain't Silicon Valley. This ain't the low east side of Manhattan. Okay? Or any other liberal enclave. Even though these people are liberals, these are some poor white folk up there. Why is poverty not affecting them? Why don't they need violence interrupters? Why don't they need resources? Because they're, they're poor. Anybody from Milwaukee back me up on this. Yes, they have some, but they have like homegrown white Milwaukee. They got white people that are from Milwaukee. They don't have like white people that come from other places. The best of the best of the white race comes from other races to take the jobs and live in condos like they do on the East Coast. These people, white people from here, their parents ain't had nothing and they ain't have nothing. Look at all these God, 17 year old fatally shot. Well, Lisa Rest is made. She was killed at a party. You sisters, boy. Woo. 14 year old girl fatally shot. Yeah. Oh, here go a white guy. Jason Clearman. Police search for a man with the bike in connection to homicide. Okay, so this guy was killed. Somebody rode up on a bike and killed him. I did a story on this girl. This woman celebrating her 27th birthday. She looked like one of the Braxton. She looked like Tracy Braxton. Celebrating her 27th birthday, shot dead outside of Milwaukee Bar. I know you remember this, brother. Burnell Trammell, activist. He had a little storefront, and he used to put signs, provocative signs up there. Um, he was a Trump supporter and he got in an argument with some brother because, you know, you, at this time, July 20, 23rd, 2020, and this was an Afrocentric brother. He loved blackness. Like, he was woke and he woke black, but he just liked Trump too. Got an argument with a brother over Trump. Brother came back, smoked him. And this brother been he he been out there for years with his signs and you know his little pulpit or whatever um, stoop or whatever he was he would do and engage the public talk about political issues. <laughs> now this city's forty four percent white. Where are all the white people at? It's literally 10 times as many black women murdered in this city as all the other races combined. <laughs> it's 10 times as many black women as killed in this city as Latinos, whites, Asians, Native Americans, all combined. 10 times. Oh, this woman. Man charged with killing woman and shooting her boyfriend in dispute that began over $100. Argument in the street. Mm. Wow. 
Wow. This system. Oh, wow. This is a nice little collection. White people. Wow, this is a bad week for white folk. The brothers. <laughs> the brothers must have, must have had bad aim this week. Oh, okay, this was that attack. This was this was that that brother, that son man that went into that brewery. Who remembers that? It got it got um national attention for like until they found out it was a brother. I did a video on this one too, but who remembers that? Yeah. It was a brewery, so CNN was covering it. They just thought they had one. Then it was like slowly came out. I was like, yeah, man, this was a brother that did this. And they dropped that story like a bad habit. So all these white guys that got killed right here, they're all from that one incident at the brewery. I think Molson's Brewery. So aside from that one incident, even if you add that one incident in there, Hit the like button, subscribe, peace, I'm out.